Execution was adapted by Rod Serling from George Clayton Johnson's unpublished short story. It features time travel from the Old West, some great stunts, solid cinematography, an appearance by the professor from Gilligan's Island, and a pretty good performance from Albert Selmy. The concept had the potential to give us a really good script, but I believe it falls a little short in that area. It may have been told better in the original short story since there were several significant changes by Serling. Regardless, there's definitely no shortage of things to discuss about this episode. It's the year 1880, and criminal Joe Caswell is about to be hung for murder. But when the execution begins, he mysteriously disappears. 80 years into the future, a scientist named Professor Mannion is shown tending to his subject. He just successfully made Caswell the world's first time traveler. Hoping to integrate him into modern day New York City proves to be a difficult task though. The professor almost instantly distrusts the outlaw after noticing the rope burns on his neck. This leads to a confrontation that will affect the past, present, and future. I gotta admit, it was a bit surreal seeing the professor himself playing another professor in this episode. Russell Johnson would go on to Gilligan's Island a few years after this, so let's pretend this character changed his name before boarding the SS Minnow and getting stranded. You're a long way from home, old friend. A very long way. Johnson would make his second and final zone appearance in the season two episode, Back There. Too bad he doesn't play another professor in that story. But the same director of Execution, David Oric McDearman, directed Back There as well. Heck, he even directed two episodes of Gilligan's Island. Next fanscription, what if Gilligan's Island took place in the Twilight Zone? Anyway, Johnson is fine here as the professor, but by far the most interesting character and performance is Albert Salmi as Joe Caswell. He's got a very unbalanced attitude throughout the whole runtime. Sending him to the future has made him even more unpredictable and dangerous. When you're dangling at the end of a rope, it don't matter whether you're one foot off the ground or 100. You killed someone. A whole territory full. I stopped counting after 20. I died once already, mister. I've been to hell. Now I'm back. It's really quite a magnetic presentation Salmi shows off here. He'd make two other appearances for the series, but this is probably his best work in the Twilight Zone. The tension builds between Caswell and Mannion until the unpredictable man out of time snaps. You come out in your warm trains rolling over the graves of men like me. I just hit your kite! Caswell runs into the modern world, scared and threatening. He's overwhelmed by all the noise, bright lights, and people. The cowboy causes several disturbances, including shooting someone in a car that almost hits him and returns to the professor's laboratory. Mannion seems to be dead from Caswell's earlier assault, and that's when an armed thief named Paul Johnson shows up to rob the place. They get into a scuffle where Johnson kills Caswell by choking him with a curtain cord. Looking for a safe, he accidentally activates the time machine and is transported back to Caswell's prior location, hanging dead on the end of a rope. The people present in 1880 are baffled, and they carry off Johnson's dead body as the episode finishes. So it seems totally out of nowhere to add the modern thief character to a story that was so driven by Salmi's performance as Caswell. I guess he still gets his comeuppance by being strangled with what's basically a rope, but having this random character go back and take his place felt a little too much like reaching to have a more shocking ending. In the original story, Caswell is shot by a policeman and appears back in the Old West in the noose he disappeared in. Predictable? Yes. A better ending than what we got here? Yes. There's also a big leap in logic that bugged the crap out of me when Caswell stumbles into a bar in NYC. After destroying a jukebox, he demands a drink from the bartender by placing his gun on the bar. He takes a drink, turns around, and asks the bartender questions about the modern appliances. All while the gun just sits there. He isn't even facing forward half the time. Why couldn't the bartender just take the gun? This guy just broke his jukebox and is holding him up for alcohol. He's the most understanding bartender I've ever seen. Buddy, uh, why don't you go home and sack down, huh? Take a couple of bottles with you. That's what you need is sleep. Here, here, take these home with you. I know he's just trying to get him out of the bar without being shot, but then he even explains television to him. Uh, here, we'll, we'll give you a demonstration, huh? And only after Caswell shoots the TV does the bartender feel the need to call for the police. All right, cowboy, you gotta pay for this. Police! Police! 
I could see that scene working if it was shown to us in a different way, but how it is here is just poorly executed. No pun intended. I love how the city looks in this episode. It seems extra bright, loud, and busy. Anything to enhance the effect it's having on Caswell. The shots they went with here work perfectly to that extent. They even throw in a few from The Four of Us Are Dying. Outside of Salmi's menacingly manic turn as the outlaw, my favorite thing about this episode was some of the stunt work. Check out how the stuntman for the professor lands after being thrown over his desk. Ouch! That looked like it had to hurt being folded up like that, but it looks great. The lamp shattering on impact looks awesome too. Salmi seemed to do some of his own stunts in this episode that range from dodging close calls with moving cars to breaking through a phone booth. <laughs> While there is a second window break in the well-choreographed fight with the other thief, that does look to be a stuntman shattering the glass with his back. Bottom line is, I like the action in this episode. Too bad it seemed to bungle the story a bit, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have some impressive aspects. I'd say it's just barely worth recommending to see Albert Salmi's performance. Execution is a man out of time story taken in a darker direction. And as we all know, there's more than just north, south, east, and west when you travel to the Twilight Zone.